Hello folks, I'm Jared Picker with NYC CNC. Today, we're gonna build a table uh, for our weld shop. Uh, this is the first video I've ever done, so bear with me, please. Thanks. So this is what we're gonna be using. We're gonna be using three by three, quarter inch thick, square tubing, and we got a piece of three quarter, 836 hot roll. So let's get started making this tape. Our plate here, a three quarter plate. I use metric, so you guys are gonna have to learn how to use metric if you're gonna follow this. So we are 2470 on length by 1220 wide. So I'm gonna leave a 50 mil gap on either side, so I need to take off 100 mil on our lengths of the tubing going this way and this way. So you can see, we got our tube set up right there. We're gonna get ready to cut this. So let's talk about weld seam placement, or the tube placement of the seam right here. Uh, what you want to do is try to get it so you can hide it as best you can. I'm putting it towards the inside because if I put it on top, we're going to be bolting down our tabletop and drilling through that seam. It, it's a bear. It can be done, but it's it's hard. It's just because the metal is so hardened there, it's harder there than anywhere else on the tube. While we have this view, let's talk about uh, weld prep. So you wanna put a bevel on these edges here for better penetration, better, uh, it'll look better, the seam will be flat instead of all humped up. So if you can see that right there, we got a, about a, 45 degree angle on there to get the penetration. We got a little bit of a uh, land right there, about oh, two to three mil. So it doesn't, when you're welding it, it doesn't blow through. Okay folks, what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay out the table on the floor using chalk line. You need a partner when you're doing chalk line if you all haven't ever used them. It's pretty simple. You just get your width, you get your lines laid out. Snap your line, get it, make sure everything's square and right on. So I'm gonna go grab John and we're gonna get going on that. We gotta square these things up, make sure they're completely square. So I don't know if any of you all done it, but what you need to do, take it from that corner here, that corner here, should be the exact same as this corner here and this corner here, if your measurements are right from here to here, Outside to outside, outside to outside. Now, if it's very critical, you want to make sure you go from the center of whatever you're using, whether it's beam, channel, uh, tubing, whatever, because mill tolerances are not always right. You know, they can be plus or minus an eighth, eighth of an inch. Eighth of an inch can matter to you, but to them it doesn't. So, if it's really critical, go from center. We're about to start making this up. We're using MIG. Somebody asked us, are we going to stick it or MIG it? So 
what we're going to actually do is MIG this using 035 solid core wire. Yeah, there's better processes out there, you know, whether you're using a dual shield or using pulse MIG or sticking it, tigging it, but we're going to MIG it. We are uh, looking into actually hooking our uh, uh, Miller Dynasty up to actually uh, be able to do stick, which is not that hard. All you got to do is buy an attachment, but that's really about it. So let me get welding. Okay folks, this is a good time to talk about uphill versus downhill welds. Downhill welds, don't ever do them. Only vertical ups, that's it. Cause I'm getting ready to do a piece right here. It's gonna be a whole lot easier to weld right there. And it'll make it easier to do it downhill, but I'm not gonna do it because it does not penetrate like you want it to penetrate. So don't ever do downhill welds. Now folks, here's a good time to talk about where do I wanna put weld. Okay, I want to weld this whole gusset up, but there's a couple spots that you don't want to put weld because it will make it weaker. Welds and everything need to flex a little bit, but, and also it will make it look like crap. So where I want to weld, you want to weld all the way around, but don't wrap around your corners of the opposite, opposite sides of a common plane two welds should not touch, okay? So I can weld under bottom here, but stop about 10 mil short of the edge. Same thing on the other side. From the corner, 10 mils to the edge. That's where you need to stop. On the outside, you wrap it all the way around, stop about 10 mils again from the edge. Not that bad. You know, you can stitch it. You know, stitching is also a good thing you need to look into. You know, maybe you don't want to put so much heat in there. Um, maybe you need a little bit more flex. Uh, there's different reasons for it, but just pay attention to where you're welding stuff at. Okay, now we got this uh, table welded out, finished putting all the heat in we're gonna put in there. Let's check and see how straight we have this. See if we need to mess with it, get it straightened out. But what do we do when we don't have a $2,000 ground straight edge? Well, you go to your local hardware store and get a $2 piece of string. Okay, easy enough. Okay, I will show you step by step. So what we need is a piece of string and three blocks. All three need to be the exact same size. Once you stretch the string across your part, take the three blocks. One goes on one side, one goes on the other side. One goes directly in the middle. So let me get you a close up. Now, as you can see, we have the slightest bit of gap. I would say maybe a mil, maybe two mils right there. It's about a mil. So where is that coming from? Well, we can, we can bet that it's in the center because we, that's where we weld it. But not, you gotta look where your welds are, where the, all that heat is. So what we need to do, take a block from one side or the other, it doesn't matter at first. Take it, take that block, put it in the center, just like we did before with the center portion. It's centered between the two blocks. That one, right on. So let's try the other side. That one as well is right on. So we know that our low spot is right dead in the center. So how do we fix that? We need to take a little bit of heat to it to force it where we want it to go. 
we need to come up in the center. So we're going to put a little bit of heat on each side of this, each side of this tube, right in line with the edges of the center tube. And that should take it out. Now you got to be careful because if you put too much heat in, you'll draw too much. If you don't put enough heat in, you're going to have to reheat. But when you, if you have to reheat, you can't reheat in the exact same spot you were on before because it will not move. So you've got to go a little bit outside your heat affected zone and do it again if you don't get enough. When uh, straightening metal with torch, got to be careful. Don't put in too much heat. Otherwise, you'll have to put, a, put heat on the other side. And then you got a real good possibility of turning stuff into an S shape. And it's not fun to get out. You can get it out. It's a pain in the butt. A lot of times it ends up being you got to use a press to get it out. But you just be patient. And then when you're letting it cool, don't take an air hose to it. Don't put a fan on it because that will cool it down too quick which has tendency to not allow it to shrink like it needs to shrink. So just let it cool naturally, just walk away, and then come back. When it's cool to the touch, when you're not gonna fry your hand, you're probably good. And then recheck it, your straightness. If you need to put a little bit more heat in, like I said before, put the heat out just a little bit or a little bit on the inside and do it again and just let it cool. Okay, now that we got the table straight, then it was plus or minus, you know, a half a mil. So we're good on that. Now that we got that straight, our, uh, let's put our plate up. We got our plate up on here, and let's see how straight it is. Now, I've never uh, straightened plate. I don't feel comfortable straightening plate with heat. It, 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 it's kind of tricky. You put in, heat into it in the wrong spot, you're gonna have it all over the place. But John handed me a book by a guy named John Lipton. A lot of good information in there. A lot of good information. I would suggest you guys read it if you're gonna to do too much of it. Um, he does things a little different than what I was taught to do it by a bunch of old timers that taught me. So, but if you guys know how to straighten a plate, put the comments below and I'd love to learn how to do it.